Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video I'm going to be talking about a timeline for those of you who are interested in applying to endodontic residency programs. So the timeline is going to vary depending on whether you find yourself applying as a practicing dentist or if you're a dental student. And so I'm going to start this timeline a little bit earlier in order to accommodate those of you who are planning to apply but you're maybe just starting dental school or maybe you're in the middle of dental school. But the timeline can still be applicable to those of you who are already practicing you would just kind of fast forward in the timeline because of course at this point you're not going to be able to change what has already happened in dental school but there are still some tips that I can give you in terms of making sure that you're prepared for when application season begins. So we'll start off pretty early here just assuming that you're a first year dental student and you know that you want to pursue an endodontic specialty program following dental school. How can you kind of set yourself up for a successful application? So you want to focus initially on getting a good GPA and class rank. You can also get involved in research. I would recommend trying to start your involvement during your first year. Although you may find that you don't have a lot of time to dedicate toward research initially, it is good to at least find your mentor your first year and figure out what your research project is going to be. You can also then get involved in some extracurriculars or leadership. Usually you'll start out by just being a club member during your first year. I personally believe that quality is more important than quantity. So I would recommend joining maybe two or three clubs and really trying to be involved in those. You're going to be busy as it is. And so instead of joining 10 different clubs that you really don't do anything for, I would recommend just joining a couple and really trying to get involved. And then eventually, maybe during your third year, you can even be a leader in those clubs. And then you also want to get involved in shadowing or assisting opportunities. So if your dental school has as an endodontic program, then you can shadow or assist the residents. And the residents are really going to appreciate that. It's also going to allow you to kind of network with the endodontic faculty at your school. There are some dental schools that don't have endodontic programs. And if that's the case for you, it doesn't mean that you cannot shadow or assist. You could still find a private practice endodontist in the area and you could ask if you could go and shadow them. And again, you know, in the beginning of dental school during your first year, you might not have have as much time to do this. But even if you're doing it just a couple of times a semester just to build those relationships, and it's not just from a strategical perspective of trying to get them to like you, but it really is good to have those relationships because you can learn a lot from the faculty and residents. Even going through the application cycle, you have people that you can talk to. Another part of that is just endodontic clinical experiences in general. So this is going to differ from school to school. Some programs you're going to be able to really get involved in having a greater number of root canal procedures. So if your program gives you any leeway whatsoever in doing more root canals, then of course, during your third year, you want to try to do as many as you can. Some programs are going to limit you. So, you know, you just want to try to do the best you can with whatever you're given. If you go to a school that allows you to do 20 root canals, then you really want to be ambitious and try to do as many cases as you can. But with that said, if you go to a school where you're very limited, like I was, it doesn't mean that you're going to have no chance. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now we'll kind of move forward with when the application season is coming up. You still want to continue your objectives from your first through third year of dental school that we kind of highlighted on the previous slide. But once it gets to be your D3 fall semester is when you really want to start preparing for your actual application to end it residency. Again, this timeline is assuming that you're applying for residency straight out of dental school. And so if you decided that you wanted to take a gap year and work as a general dentist for a year before you apply, then you would be doing this a year later. So this would be during your D4 fall. But this is assuming that you want to try to apply straight out of dental school. And so you want to start your D3 fall thinking about what's coming up ahead. So typically when we apply for residency programs in dental school, we're going to be doing doing that at the end of our third year. And so it's going to be that summer between D3 and D4 year. And so D3 fall, you know that the next year it's coming up, the application cycle. And so you want to start getting everything prepared. So this would be a great time for you to put your CV together. And I do have a video that I'll put in the description for you about how to make a CV. You also have to consider your personal statement. So you can start to brainstorm ideas, maybe put together an outline 
and write your personal statement. And I also have a video that I'll link in the description for recommendations on writing a dental school personal statement for when you're applying to residency programs. Finally, you can start to think of who you might ask for a letter of recommendation. So this goes back to when I was saying building those relationships during dental school. If you have stronger relationships with your clinical faculty or you have some professors that you think know you well, then those would be good people to ask for letters of recommendation. So for me personally, I asked my research mentor, I asked an endodontic faculty member at my school, and then I also asked two clinical faculty members. And the reason that I chose to do that was because for me, I knew that as an applicant straight out of dental school, one thing that would come into question would be clinical competency. So I wanted to have two letters of recommendation from faculty that knew me well in the clinic and could testify to my patient care abilities. I also had my research mentor because I know that research is an important component when you're applying to endodontic residency programs. And then finally, having an endodontist be one of my letters of recommendation is also going to be very important. So you can do a different combination, of course. That's just kind of the way that I decided to approach it. So then when D3 spring comes about, you're really focusing on the ADAT exam. And so I would recommend taking the ADAT exam if you're applying for endodontic residency programs straight out of dental school. I think it's a great way to make your application stand out in lieu of not having that clinical experience. You're going to want to really start studying for this right at the beginning of January at the latest. You could even start before that, but it becomes a little bit difficult if you celebrate Christmas because then, you know, a lot of the times we don't want to study over Christmas break. But trying to have as close as you can to four months of studying is a good idea, but you can definitely do it in three months or even less. Every person's different, but trying to start studying in the beginning of January is what I would recommend. And also in January or February, you want to make sure that you're finalizing your personal statement and CV. This is important because that's why I mentioned to work on the personal statement and CV during your D3 fall semester, because you're going to be so busy during D3 spring. You're going to have all of your patient care still going on. And on top of that, you're going to be studying for the ADAT exam, which is very stressful. You don't really want to have to worry too much about your personal statement and CV. And then come February or March would be a good time to start asking for letters of recommendation. This is going to give the recommendation writers a long time to be able to prepare their letters for you. And of course, you're going to want to continue to remind them as the date gets closer to when the letters are due. And you can also email programs during these couple of months to ask if you can go and visit them. So you want to consider specifically programs that might be in closer proximity to you that you could actually travel to. And then also programs where you could see yourself going or maybe they're your top choice or you think you'd have a better chance of getting in. And then you can ask if you can go and shadow during April or May just to kind of visit the program, meet the program director and the residents. And that can also help you to potentially get an interview at that program. Again, it's not a guarantee, but it is a way for you to network. And then finally in April, you're going to want to take your ADAT exam. And there is also the AAE conference that is usually at the end of April or the beginning of May. And that conference is a national conference for endodontists and it is going to be a great way for you to network and meet program directors and also to learn about the field of endodontics. I would highly recommend attending the conference if you're able to and you can try your best to just meet people there and try to network. Again, you don't have to be excessive. It's not important that you meet every single program director, but it is a great opportunity if there's a specific program that you're interested in, you can ask for more information and just kind of connect with other endodontic residents and endodontists. So then the actual application process really kicks into gear once you've taken the ADAT exam. After the AAE conference, then you're really going to want to make sure that you get everything ready for when the pass application opens. And so this is a great time to remind your letter of rec writers to be ready to submit as soon as possible. Unlike other specialty programs that you're going to see your classmates applying for, it's really crucial that you apply as soon as possible once the pass application opens. A lot of your classmates are going to be waiting until June, July to submit their application, but for endo, they already start to send interview invitations in June, and so you really need to make sure that you're submitting as soon as you can, and so that might even be a week or two after the application opens, ideally. And so one way that you can prepare is you can print a cardstock sheet 
sheet of two by two photos of you and those are going to be your professional headshots and then you can cut those out so certain programs are going to have you mail a two by two photo of you and so having those ready is going to make it a lot easier once you're getting ready to apply you can also make sure that you have some envelopes and stamps gathered because you're going to need those in order to send out those two by two photos you also want to make sure that you know where you can get your money orders or cashier checks from in order to mail the supplemental application fee to programs make sure that you have a printer accessible so that you can print your supplemental items that will also be mailed to certain programs and then what i did that i found to be super helpful in staying organized in all of this was to have a spreadsheet and i would literally have every single program that i was applying to and then i would have the extra requirements that that program has so for all of the programs you're going to submit your personal statement your cv and then your adat score but only certain programs are going to also have a supplemental application and some of them are going to have you mail your two by two photos but others aren't and so you want to be able to stay organized and so i used a spreadsheet to help me do that so that i could make sure that i was really completing each application for all of the programs that i was applying to because if you try to keep it all in your head there's a good chance that you're going to forget certain requirements for some of the programs that you're applying to and because this is a very expensive process and you do want to give yourself the best chance of getting accepted and getting interviews i think it's important that you make sure that you stay organized and that all of your applications are complete also be aware of some programs that don't participate in the past application process so this can be annoying because you basically have to fill out the same information that you're putting in past but you're doing it on that program's website directly so it's kind of like you're completing the past application again which can be a little bit stressful but just make sure that you're aware ahead of time so that you know what's coming and you can allocate your time appropriately so I mentioned the two by two photos and I want to give you guys an example of kind of what that looks like so you would just have a piece of paper on a word document and you would have all of your photos lined up and you would set the dimensions to be two by two inches and then after you print that I would recommend printing it on something like a nicer piece of paper so maybe using cardstock which is a little bit harder so it's not going to bend or fold as much if it's sent in the mail or some sort of nicer material that you can send these pictures on and then those would be cut out and put in envelopes to send to whatever programs request them so once it's may of your d4 summer semester this is going to be about a week before the pass application opens it's important to remind your letter of rec writers that pass is about to open and to make sure that they're ready to submit their letters of recommendation for you and then you'll also need to get what's called a dean's letter and that's going to be on top of the letter of recommendations that you get from the faculty at your school and so for the dean's letter for most schools this is just going to be them giving your class rank if you've had any disciplinary action taken against you and information like that and so you want to make sure that your dean is aware that for endodontic programs it is important to submit early and i know every program they kind of say the same thing so for oral surgery or ortho everyone's going to say submit early but early for endo really means early and so it's not okay if your dean's letter is submitted sometime in june in the middle of june even though if you go to a program's website it will say that you can submit your application to endo residency through the end of august let's say that is way too late so you would miss the interview by then for most programs um, for basically every program and so you want to emphasize to the dean in advance that you're going to need that letter within the first couple of weeks of may and so again you don't want to be rude about it but you just want to make sure that they're aware that it really is more important for endo residency specifically to get your application out as soon as possible after the pass application opens and then after that you're just going to try to complete everything else as fast as you can you should have your personal statement and cv ready your letters of recommendation should be ready to be submitted you want to make sure that you can easily access your official transcript not only for your dental school but also your undergraduate transcript so familiarize yourself with the process to get those submitted and then in terms of what you're going to mail out you've got your two by two photos already cut out and ready and then you've got your spreadsheet where you went to every single program's website and you wrote down what are the supplemental requirements so do they need a two by two photo is there a supplemental essay or application what is the amount of money that they want you to send to 
them by mail or do they want you to pay online? And then you're also going to have to send your NBDE part one and two scores or your INBDE scores. You know, typically now those are just pass fail. It depends how long ago you might have taken NBDE part one and two. But for the most part, those are just going to be that you passed those exams and then you would submit that to your pass application. And then when in doubt, if you're confused on what the program wants from you and the website is unclear, then go ahead and email the program, but do it as soon as possible because you want to get that application out as soon as you can. So moving on to June of D4 summer, this is when programs are going to start to send out interview invites. I would recommend preparing a list of commonly asked interview questions, and then you can start by just writing out some bullet points of how you might answer those questions. And then once you feel pretty confident about the way that you want to answer the question, then I would recommend actually practicing saying it out loud, since that's going to be a lot different than just writing out your answer. And then also as you receive interview invitations, I would go on to the program's website and do some investigation to see if you can come up with any specific questions that you have for each program. So after each interview, you're going to be asked if you have any questions about the program. And usually you'll only have time to ask one or two questions, but it is good to have a few prepared that you can ask in case. And then really the most important thing to be doing during the month of June is just practicing answering these commonly asked interview questions and making sure that you're as prepared as you can be going into July. And then during the months of July and August, the interview invitations are going to continue from different programs. And I do encourage you to try not to lose hope. If you don't get any interview invitations in the month of June, you might start to feel discouraged. But just remember that the process actually does become a little bit easier as time goes on. Because if you think about it, because of the way that endodontics works in the sense that it is a non-match residency, meaning that if you are accepted into a program, they will tell you shortly after the interview, and then you have to make a decision. And for the most part, everyone is going to go to the first school that accepts them. And so a lot of the more competitive applicants are going to be taken out of the interview pool earlier on. So like in the month of July, for example. And so then they will go on to cancel any upcoming interviews. And then that is going to open up some spots for other candidates to interview. So just kind of keep that in mind. And just remember that even if you're not interviewing really early on in the month of July, that those interviews are going to continue throughout the month of August even. So just try to be patient. And then you want to specifically prepare for each program's interview. So you want to make sure that you've researched the program and that you know kind of the pros and cons of that program and you have some intelligent questions prepared that you can ask. Also, if you have multiple interviews, make sure that you're learning from your past mistakes. So it isn't uncommon that you don't get accepted during your first interview attempt. And that's totally fine. But just make sure that you're trying to identify how you can improve as you go on to future interviews. And then I would consider sending a thank you to the admissions committee via email after your interview. That can be a nice gesture just to show that you're appreciative of the time that they've spent to interview you and also to review all of the applications that they receive. With few exceptions, a program is typically going to extend all of their interview invitations on a single day. And so invariably what happens is you're kind of going to find yourself maybe looking at SDN to see if anyone else has received an interview invitation for the programs that you applied to. And that's fine. Try not to let that consume your day. But unfortunately, if interview invitations have been extended for a specific program, usually those are all going to be extended on a single day. Now, there are exceptions to that. And of course, some people are going to drop out and no longer be able to attend that interview. And then that can open up other spots. But most of the invitations tend to go out on a single day with some exceptions in there. Most of the programs are going to contact you immediately after the interview to let you know if you were accepted if you interview on the last day. Now, if you interview, let's say on a Monday, and then that program is doing their interviews on Monday and Tuesday, you could expect to get a call if you were accepted on Tuesday, even if you're interviewing on Monday. So it's going to be the day that the last group interviews. Typically that evening, they'll let you know if you were accepted. Now, some schools might notify you the following day. So again, there is some variability, but typically you'll be notified very shortly after the interview within, you know, a couple of days. And then you'll have a pretty short time to decide if you want to accept that program's offer for admission. And then once you accept 
accept a program's offer, you're going to need to cancel all future interviews. Very, very few programs are going to let you continue to interview even if you've accepted their offer. So for the most part, you're going to be asked to cancel all future interview invitations once you've accepted a position at a specific program. And so then with very few exceptions, by September, you'll know which program that you were accepted to and where you'll be going. To those of you who do get accepted, congratulations. And for those of you who are not accepted, just remember that this is a really competitive process, especially for those of you who are applying either for the first time or applying straight out of dental school. Remember that it is a lot more difficult to get accepted straight out of dental school if you don't have that additional clinical experience. And then also, even if you have been practicing for a while and this is your first time applying, it's just generally difficult to get in. And so try not to be too hard on yourself. And I would recommend that for those of you who are applying straight out of dental school, maybe consider applying for a general practice residency or a GPR program. That can really increase your competitiveness as a candidate. Some of you guys who are applying who have been working for a while, maybe you already did a GPR or an AGD. And so you can also contact program directors for schools where you interviewed at. You know, just thank them for giving you the opportunity to interview and then ask them if they have any recommendations for you to strengthen your candidacy for next year. And so just think about what you could possibly improve in your application and your interview skills. And then remember that you have another opportunity next year to apply. So definitely don't give up on the specialty if you don't get in the first time. And I'm going to end with just some final notes for you guys. So one thing I want to mention is that I really do think there is some sort of a luck component involved in the entire application process. So I remember even at one of the schools that I interviewed at, one of the faculty was talking about how when he applied to endodontic residency, he didn't get into any of the programs his first round. A lot of the programs didn't interview him and he had been practicing for several years. And then when he applied the second year, he applied to every program in the country and the school that he was ultimately accepted to ended up telling him that he was their top choice by far after he was accepted and he had went on to ask the program why was it that the first cycle that he applied the previous cycle he didn't even get an interview invitation and really nothing had changed about his application between that first cycle that he didn't even get an interview at that program compared to the second round the second year when he was accepted and told that he was their favorite candidate and there was really no good answer that he received from the program and so again I'm not saying that this whole thing is just luck but of course you know at the end of the day just don't take it personally if you're not accepted it doesn't really mean that there's something wrong with you or anything like that I just kind of wanted to put that out there and then also remember that there's no need to apply for a GPR program prophylactically so don't just assume like if you're applying for example straight out of dental school and you're like all right if this doesn't work out I'm gonna do a GPR so let me apply to both of them at the same time that's not necessary because you will know if you were not accepted into an endo program by the end of August and then you still have time to put together an application for GPR programs or AGD programs and so you don't have to apply to both of them at the same time and then I think ultimately the bottom line of everything that I've talked about is just make sure that you prepare and practice early so in order to set yourself up for the greatest chance of success in this very competitive process you really want to make sure that you're practicing your interview skills you want to make sure that you have that CV ready early the personal statement and everything and you can submit early because a lot of times what happens is we procrastinate and then everything gets rushed and maybe your personal statement isn't as high quality as you would have liked or you didn't give your rec letters enough time to write you good letters or your CV might be sloppy and have grammatical errors in it so just make sure that you space it out so that you're able to stay on top of everything and that you take the process very seriously and then that can increase your chances of at least putting your you know best foot forward and giving yourself the best opportunity that you have to be successful thanks for watching if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos